Hey there, tech aficionados. It's Sean Batir bringing you on another electrifying journey through the tech cosmos, where today we're intertwining threads of human creativity with the calculated precision of artificial intelligence. So AI, that buzzy acronym that ricocheted through 2021, weaving itself into everything from healthcare to meme culture. Today, we will delve deeper, exploring a conundrum that teeters on the very essence of our human experience, creativity. Now, I know what you're thinking. I'm already creative. Why do I need AI? Well, AI can help you to be more creative in a number of ways. It can help you to generate new ideas, to think outside the box, and to come up with solutions that maybe you wouldn't have thought of on your own. Here's a compelling anecdote connected to recent trending news that demonstrated this point. Did you hear about that recent AI-generated painting that sold for over $400,000 at an auction? It's called The Portrait of Edmund Bellamy, and it was created by an AI system called the Generative Adversarial Network, or AGAN. This painting is the perfect example of how AI can be used to enhance human creativity. The artist who created the GAN, Robbie Barat, didn't paint the portrait himself. Instead, he actually used AI to generate millions of different paintings, and then he selected the one that he liked best. This is just one example of how AI can be used to help us be more creative. In fact, according to previous studies on creativity and human cognition, the three most important metrics of creativity are fluency, originality, and flexibility. So let's dig into that a bit. Originality is the first metric that researchers think about with creativity, which is the ability to generate new and unique ideas. AI can help us think outside the box. For example, AI can be used to help us solve problems in new and innovative ways. It can also be used to help us see the world from different perspectives. Second is fluency, and it refers to the ability to generate a large number of ideas, regardless of the quality. Well, if anyone has played with any one of the many new large language models, LLMs, or generative models that have popped up, then they can agree that AI can help us generate new ideas. For example, AI can be used to brainstorm new products, it can come up with new marketing campaigns, and it can even write new stories. Finally, Flexibility is the third metric, and that refers to the capacity to think outside the box and think divergently, finding different ways to do things. AI can help us come up with solutions that we wouldn't have thought of on our own. For example, people have used these LLMs and generative AI to actually develop new drugs, to design new products, and even, as we said earlier, create new works of art. So, we now know that AI can help us improve performance in all three of these metrics. Let's dive even deeper, and I'm talking deep network deeper. AI can help us generate more ideas and come up with more original ideas and also think more flexibly. So let's kick things off with the realm of originality, the domain where novel and valuable things dance in a tight embrace, and they can spring forth from a chaotic yet sublime recess of our human cognition. So enter AI like Ava, which, let's not forget, ignited cybernetic sparks by composing classical music that wooed not just our algorithm critics, but our human connoisseurs as well. Now immersing itself into a sea of compositions spanning eras of musical evolution, Evil learned, synthesized, and then created. And while the creations echo a strange familiarity, one might ponder, can originality truly sprout from a digital seed rooted in the realms already explored by human minds? Or are these digital compositions, while unique in arrangement, simply an embodiment of fresh, untapped creativity? Or, moreover, maybe they are a mosaic of historical audio artifacts that are simply rearranged through a lens of algorithmic logic. The truth is that it's a little bit more complicated than you think. The algorithm behind Ava is inherently stochastic, so technically each time you generate a new MIDI, the rendering should be just a little bit different, even if you use the same initial conditions of key, beats per minute, and influence or style, as well as time length. Now, let's cascade into our second cornerstone, fluency. As I mentioned earlier, in the boundless universe of creativity, Fluency is our capacity to churn out idea after idea after idea. And let's be real, who does it better than our digital pals? 
DALI 3 by OpenAI, do you remember it? Generating bizarre yet strangely coherent visuals like a clock that morphs into Salvador Dali's mustache. We already have these capabilities. An endless stream of ideas, undoubtedly. But does the quantity potentially dilute the depth? The soul that often meanders through creations birthed from the human mind's mired in experience, emotion, and existential complexity. A question, my digital explorers, that we may continue to ponder as we navigate through the ever-evolving digital canvas. And now, onto our third conceptual pillar. Let's gently meander through the meadows of flexibility. Now, this is where AI, unburdened by predispositions and cognitive biases, could potentially outshine our creative flares. GPT 3.5, a text generating maestro, didn't just stop at mimicking human-like text. It danced rather gracefully between topics, styles, and even context. One moment, it's penning a playful poem about the cosmos, and the next, it's diving into a technical manual about rocket propulsion systems. But does this versatility emanate from a genuine understanding and creative zest, or is it merely a skillful rehashing of learned patterns? Most experts would actually say the latter. But let's hit the pause on the button of logic for just a second and rewind a moment back to 2021 when our collective consciousness was captured in our digital hearts. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about Sophia, the humanoid robot who unveiled a piece of art that she created herself named Sophia Instantiation, which later sold as an NFT for a staggering 688-8888, almost $700,000. Now, an Android delving into the human realm of art, splashing colors onto a canvas that resonated with us, the beholders. How can we ponder that a being void of living experiences of emotional torrents could create something that actually tugs at our human emotional strings? Or hey, maybe with just enough training data, even a robot can create art. So with that, let's think about how we might want to design an experiment at a high level that you could use at either work or at a university or your startup to explore and answer this question in a more controlled manner. Let's think about this experiment here. First, we would need to design our main hypothesis that large language models can actually help humans be more creative. Now, we already know the three metrics that we would want to measure, originality, fluency, and flexibility. So in terms of the basic methods, how would we set this up for human machine teaming and interaction? The first step would be to recruit a group of participants and randomly assign them to either a human only group or a human AI group. Second, give both groups the same task, such as coming up with new ideas for products, services, or inventions. Step three is to allow the human AI group to access a large language model, such as BARD or GPT. Step four is to then collect the ideas generated by both groups and then have them rated by a panel of judges for creativity along those three metrics. Now, of course, we would predict that the human AI group would generate more ideas and their ideas will be more original and flexible than the human only group. We also have to hold in the back of our minds our null hypothesis as well. That is that there is actually no difference or delta between the humans with access to an LLM versus the humans without an access to the LLM. So this experiment would actually provide valuable insight into how large language models can be used to quantitatively enhance human creativity. The results could have implications for education, for business, and other fields where creativity is just as important. This experiment is meant to just be a starting point, and there are many, many other ways to study the human-machine interaction and teaming to assess creativity. By using large language models and generative AI, we can develop new tools and techniques to help humans be more creative and innovative. I would love to see what your results are and feel free to share those results directly with me and my email below. Well, team, we're navigating through uncharted territories, tech lovers where our digital creations might just hold a mirror up against our own creative endeavors, sparking questions that venture beyond mere technological curiosity and into the realm of existential pondering. And as we stand on this precipice, peering into future, where our creative pursuits are intertwined with digital intellect, we must ask, how do we traverse this new renaissance, ensuring that the creations birthed from human-machine symbiosis are not just plentiful, original, and versatile, but also 
profoundly meaningful. Join me as we continue to surf on this colossal wave of digital transformation, exploring, questioning, and marveling at the symphony played by human and machine. Drop your thoughts, insights, and existential crises down in the comments below. Remember to hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and continue riding this techno-philosophical wave with me. This is Sean Batir signing off. Keep dreaming, keep questioning, and hey, if you're interested in sharing the results of your LLM-enabled experiment, then let's collab.